Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our information session on the request for proposal for the New Best Starts um, Child Care Subsidy Program. My name is Katie Kaiser, and I am one of the Child Care Subsidy Program Managers at the county. Um, and I'm joined by a few of my colleagues who I will have introduced themselves now. Um, Jessica, would you go first? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Jessica Tolliner Caffrey. I am the Child Care Policy Lead for King County. Uh, Steph? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Ospina Velas, or Steph. She, her pronouns, and I'm the other child care um, subsidy program manager with Best Starts for Kids. And Joanna. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joanna Armstrong. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the RFP lead. Um, thank you. So Jessica will be um, co-presenting with me on a few of the slides, and um, Steph and Joanna will be uh, monitoring the chat and taking notes on, um, on all of the questions that you ask. Um, so today um, we have um, a, a, a pretty uh, packed agenda. Uh, we will start with an overview, a basic overview of the Best Starts for Kids initiative. Um, then we'll go into a review of the key elements of this request for proposal. Um, after that, we'll review the proposal materials for each role or scope of work that is included in, the, in this RFP. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, we can cover this agenda as quickly as possible, so there are plenty of time for questions at the end. In terms of logistics, um, this is, we, we welcome all of your questions. Um, so there are a few different ways that you can ask questions about, um, about this RFP and get answers from, um, official answers from the county. So you can, during, um, during this part of the presentation, add your questions to the Zoom chat box. Um, Steph and Joanna will be monitoring that throughout the presentation. Um, if you're asking a, a question that seems critical to clarify, um, before I move on, they'll interrupt me and then I will, I will clarify um, at the time. But most of the questions are going to be waiting until the Q&A section. And then we will um, ask, we will answer all those at the end. You also are, are welcome to unmute yourself to ask questions during the Q&A. Um, if you think of something outside of this presentation, um, you may email um, Joanna, our RFP lead, and the email address is here, um, dchscontracts at kingcounty.gov. And every question that is asked in this info session, in the info session that we're holding next week, and any question that comes in to um, that, uh, our RFP lead will be um, answered and posted publicly in the frequently asked questions section of, the, of Zoom grants. Um, so any questions that are asked will be answered so that all can see answers. All right, and so at this point, I will turn it over to Jessica to give you an overview of Best Starts for Kids. Thanks, Katie. Uh, so I am just gonna share some grounding so that uh, we're all on the same page about Best Starts and how we got to where we are. Um, Best Starts is really grounded in the philosophy of healthy, happy, I'm sorry, happy, healthy, safe, and thriving. Um, and what that means is that we wanna see babies born healthy, we wanna see kids thrive, and we wanna see our young people grow up to be happy, healthy, successful adults. Next slide, please. So our mission at Best Starts is really to strengthen families and communities so that we can achieve that goal, so that we can really achieve this vision of happy, healthy, safe, and thriving uh, community and families. Next slide, please. We're also grounded in an equity statement, um, which is paired with some questions for interrogation um, that was developed by our Children Youth Advisory Board. Um, that is the board of uh, wonderful people who, um, uh, who help govern much of the work that Best Starts does. Some of the key things that we really come back to in grounding that work are the idea that equity is an ardent journey toward well-being as it's defined by the affected that equity is disruptive and uncomfortable and it is not voluntary, and that equity is fundamental to the community that we want to build. 
Uh, the full statement is linked in these slides, um, and so you can access it in that way. Next slide, please. And so uh, really, once again, it comes back to this idea that it is an ardent journey. It's not an end place, um, but a continuous and um, fully committed journey towards well-being, and that that well-being really should be defined by the people who are most affected. Next page, please. Best Starts is really grounded in this idea, and we recognize that inequities exist across the county, um, particularly by race and place. Um, we know that those inequities threaten our collective prosperity, and what that means to us is also collective well-being. So we are working at Best Starts to invest in organizations that are re reflective of and embedded in the communities they serve. Um, and we think about both addressing inequities and disparities, as well as really honoring and building upon the strengths, assets, and ingenuity that communities already possess. Next slide, please. And so um, once again, Best Starts again is really focused on this idea of happy, healthy, safe, and thriving. And what that means is that we've really moved to working upstream. We know that so many of our programs focus on addressing harm that has already happened, and that is important. But through Best Starts, we're really focusing on a, a couple of key things. Those things are promotion of the good. So that's thinking about how do we promote good outcomes for babies, for children, for families, and for community. Um, prevention of harm. So how do we prevent those things that we know lead to worse outcomes before they happen? Early intervention. So when kiddos do need additional supports, how do we step in early and give them and their families and communities the resources that they need? And then policy and systems change. How do we move to a world where this promotion of the good and prevention of the bad is what we um, are able to really focus on? Next slide, please. So the investment in childcare is informed by um, quite a bit of deep discussion and listening with community. Um, King County did have a childcare investment back in the 90s, which was discontinued due to funding. And so it's really exciting to be able to bring back a significant investment. Um, I will say the Women's Advisory Board for King County raised childcare as an issue back in 2019. In 2020, our children, uh, and I'm sorry, Children, Families, and Strategy Task Force uh, released a report around equitable and accessible childcare in King County. They were appointed by the executive and council to um, really look at access and affordability. And what they said is actually, we need to look at this system as a whole. How do we build a thriving and equitable system that serves kids well, families well, um, and the providers who are doing this incredible work? Um, and so they released 20 recommendations that range from really sort of tactical investments all the way to foundational commitments of anti-racism and being reflective about how we raise and use revenue. And that report is really what we tend to come back to anytime we're doing childcare work um, to sort of ground us in our um, agreed upon priorities. Next slide, please. A couple of the key things that I would highlight from that report, as I mentioned, are these foundational principles. So these are things around um, anti-racism, guidance for how we can use revenue and should use revenue, and accountability structures. They also included some programmatic recommendations, and a couple of those that were really key to informing this Best Starts investment were a recommendation to support equitable wages and benefits for childcare providers, um, and to institute financial supports for King County families in order to access childcare. They also recommended comprehensive supports for black and brown providers um, and for creating a pipeline of men in the field as well. Next slide, please. I think I'm passing this over to you, Katie. Yes. Thanks. Um, and so now we'll get into the specific, um, the specific funding um, that we are discussing here today. Um, so the Best Starts for Kids Child Care Subsidy Program um, is funded by a, a property tax levy called Best Starts for Kids. And it was just passed by voters, the second iteration of it, um, in um, August of 2021. And it extends for a total of six years from 2022 through 2027. And the total six-year funding for the Child Care Subsidy Program is about $160 million. The RFP that we um, are discussing today is contracting for about 73.7 .7 million of those dollars over a three year period. So from about um, July of 2022 
um, to June of 2025, um, with the option um, and the potential for extending contracts um, beyond that three-year period. Um, I will get into specific funding maximums for each scope of work in a later slide. Um, so for our timeline, um, the RFP released last Friday um, and will be um, open until April 13th. Um, that is when applications are due at 2 p.m. Uh, we have the info sessions today and another one next Wednesday at um, 9 a.m. Uh, these are the these are identical presentations, so please don't feel the need to attend both of them. Any different questions that are asked and answered during the second session will be posted um, publicly in Zoom grants. So you don't feel the need to come to both sessions. It's really the same information. Um, the deadline to contact us with official questions that will be answered and posted publicly uh, is March 18th. Um, and then the deadline to request technical assistance, which I will talk about in the next slide, is March 30th. Um, we will undergo the rating and review process um, in the second half of April. Um, there, will be, um, there will be interviews for top scoring subsidy administrator and family access and support team coordinator applicants in um, the first week in May. And those uh, applicants selected for that will be notified in the week of April 25th. And then our tentative notification um, goal is um, by the end of May, with contract discussions happening in June and hopefully launching contracts in July. Um, so I mentioned in my last slide technical assistance. Um, so for any applicants applying for this RFP, we have free technical assistance available through March 30th. And the goal of this is to support organizations and eliminate any barriers that might, um, that might prevent you from seeking funding. Um, so our TA providers are not grant writers, but they can help you, they can help assist you in determining if this is an appropriate fit for, um, if your organization and your program is an appropriate fit for the funding opportunity. They can provide guidance on how to best answer your questions. They can support your proposal development, editing, budget review, and help you in explaining your story and your proposal in the most clear and concise way. Um, it was my understanding there might be a couple of our TA providers online today. Um, so if you're here, feel free to um, unmute yourself and come on camera and just say hello real quick. Okay. Um, so it, it looks like we um, it looks like they may not have been able to join us today. So um, a couple a couple notes to ensure that you get the best support possible um, from our technical assistance. Please reach out to them as early as possible um, once you know that you're going to apply. Um, they may be able to accommodate last minute requests, um, but our, it's it's better to give them the full amount of time. Uh, please contact one technical assistance provider at a time and give them at least 24 hours to respond before seeking another provider. Um, these instructions are all also in the RFP. Um, and then if you have connected with a technical assistance provider but have decided to work with someone else, please just let the initial provider know directly. Um, and so you can find um, a list of all of our technical assistance providers in attachment F of the RFP. Um, and, um, and, and there is a, a list with their contact information and their, um, their photos and, and, and information about, about the, um, the consultants that will be providing that technical assistance. Um, and so I wanted to quickly review the funding objectives for this RFP. Um, we are here to create a new child care subsidy program in King County um, that really centers and prioritizes the needs of families, that advances equity and eliminates disparity in child care access, that provides seamless and low barrier user experience for all families and child care providers, that demonstrates a commitment to the well-being and sustainability of child care providers, 
that prioritizes continuous quality improvement and the integration of family, community, and provider feedback. Um, and that partners with key stakeholders to build on existing subsidy programs to fill gaps and expand access. And then we're looking for a program that can adapt to a very dynamic and shifting childcare landscape um, that we anticipate over the next six years. Um, just to make sure that we are, um, that we have uh, frequent terms defined. When I say a subsidy program, we mean paying a, a portion of the, the cost of tuition at a licensed childcare provider on behalf of a family that's eligible for the program. So sometimes these are called scholarships, sometimes these are called vouchers, but whatever it is we're referring to is an eligible family gets a portion or all of their childcare paid for, and that money is paid directly to a childcare provider on behalf of the family. Um, these funding objectives have been develop, developed and co-created in partnership with many community partners over the last several years. Jessica talked about the, the Children and Family Strategy Task Force. They really came out of those recommendations, as well as a work group that we had helping us design this RFP. Um, many of these objectives also inform the rating criteria for this RFP. And so I suggest you become really familiar with these objectives. Um, and work to integrate them into your proposals. Um, just a quick overview of um, the, the families and the children that we hope to serve with this program when it is open to the public. Um, the initial eligibility for the new subsidy uh, will be for families who, families must reside in King County, have a gross household income, so that means pre-tax, that falls below 85% state median income. Um, that, is, that corresponds roughly to 80% of the King County area median income, which is also the cutoff for low income housing supports. Um, and that's where we, where we came with to that um, income cutoff. Um, families have to have one or more children between ages birth to 12, and they have to be ineligible for working connections which is the state child care subsidy, or not well served by that or other existing programs. And again, this will be determined on a case by case basis um, and will be operationalized once um, a subsidy administrator um, is, is identified. Um, we will, um, we, you know, we will, um, Right now, in, in our conversation, we won't be getting into the specifics of if, you know, how children will, will be prioritized if there is, um, you know, if there is not um, sufficient funding to serve all who are interested and kind of the, the policies and procedures around this will be, um, will be uh, worked out in the next couple months before the program becomes public, but I just wanted you to get a sense of who we're hoping um, to serve in, in King County. Um, Best Starts also has a commitment to, um, to minimizing existing disparities in childcare access. Um, and we have identified those disparities in our community, both through research, but also through um, really extensive engagement with, um, with, with community members. And so we will be prioritizing funding organizations who demonstrate culturally responsive and relationship-based approaches to serving the following children and families who have um, who who um, tend to have existing disparities in childcare access in our community. Okay, so who should apply for this RFP? Um, this request is is open to organizations serving King County who want to help administer the subsidy. This includes for-profit and nonprofit organizations, community-based organizations, tribes and tribal organizations, public and governmental agencies. Um, it was our intention with this RFP to ensure that organizations of any size could be competitive for funding through this RFP. And so we encourage small nonprofits and community-based organizations to apply. And I just want, as a point of clarification, 
This request um, and this opportunity for funding is to identify the organizations who want to help build the infrastructure for this childcare subsidy program. So they want to help build, administer, and promote this new program. Um, the operational details of how eligibility will be determined, how families will apply and be prioritized for funding, all of those things will be determined in the coming months before the program's available to the public. So I would say in order to seek funding at this stage of the program, your organization should want to carry out one of the three scopes of work defined in this request for proposal. And we'll get into those details. But if you're a childcare provider or a family looking for support for specific children, um, this is not the time to seek funding. That will be once the program is open to the public. Okay. So this is where we start to get into the, um, the, the design of the program and the specific areas, um, the specific scopes of work, the specific um, roles that we are seeking to contract through this request for proposal. So this RFP will identify and fund applicants to fill three distinct roles that will implement the Best Starts Child Care Subsidy Program in King County. Um, you can find more information about each of these roles and details about the scope of work, an application checklist, the narrative questions, the rating criteria. Those can all be found in the attachments in, um, in the RFP. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through um, a basic flow of how um, of how the program uh, the program will work and how each role um, contributes to that to that program design. So you can see here at the top we have families. This pink arrow here indicates application for subsidy. So this would be families indicating that they would like to be considered for a, a child care subsidy. Those applications will all go to the central subsidy administrator role. Um, the subsidy administrator will be responsible for hosting the application for the child care subsidy and the data management system for both the families and for the child care providers. The subsidy administrator will verify eligibility and they will be the ones managing the vendor relationship with the child care providers, meaning that they will be actually paying the um, licensed child care providers on behalf of eligible families each month. Um, then we have the family access and support team with a coordinator. So the, we understand and we anticipate that families will need all levels of support in the process of applying for, enrolling in, and successfully using their, their subsidy. And so that's where the family access and support. Yeah. One second. That's where the family access and support team um, comes in. So the family access and support team, which I may refer to as the FAST team, um, they provide outreach, application assistance, and relationship-based childcare access and support for families. Um, they, um, the intention is that every family that applies to the subsidy will be connected to a FAST team member to support them through the process. Um, uh, we, uh, we see this as, as two um, sort of levels, two tiers of support. We have general navigation support services, uh, which will provide customer service and basic technical assistance to families as they apply for, enroll in, and use the subsidy. Um, some examples of, of general navigation support include um, checking on the status of a family's application. So that person, the FAST team member would be the family's contact person for the subsidy. And if they were wondering what the status of their application would be, they could check in with their FAST team member. Um, they could provide applicants with consultation on eligibility for other public subsidies. So if it comes out during the application that the family may be eligible for the state subsidy, that general navigation support person could help them 
refer them to the state subsidy and connect with those resources. Um, and then kind of technical things, like if they need to switch their childcare provider, or if they're changing between school year and summer care and need a change in rates or the amount of time that they're authorized to use care. On the other hand, and, and these general navigation support team members would be expected to serve about 300 children and their families each year. So kind of a, a, a more minimal level of touch. Then we have case management support um, would be provided for families who are experiencing additional barriers to access and need deeper, more sustained support to, to, um, to use their subsidy. So examples of this um, support might include um, the services that are offered in general navigation support, um, but also services like child care vacancy checks. Um, so helping a family call around and find a provider that is, is available and meets the needs of the family. Uh, they might offer basic needs referrals. So if a family needs help finding diapers and formula to be able to use child care, a case management support um, staff person could, could help them make those connections. And then um, potentially connections to developmental supports like early support for infants and toddlers. Um, and then our family access and support team coordinator is really the, um, is really the role that will pull together all of the, um, the FAST team members and make it a high functioning, highly communicative aligned team. Um, so they will con convene the FAST team for trainings and practice alignment. They will balance team caseloads um, across, across the team members. And then they will, be, um, they will develop um, outreach materials and, um, and engage the FAST team in, in outreach efforts. So you can see on here, the green arrows are where Best Starts funding flows. So you can see that Best Starts will directly fund the family access and support team members with the coordinator. And then Best Starts will fund the subsidy administrator who will then pay child care providers on behalf of eligible families. Um, please note that applicants may and are encouraged to apply for more than one role. If you apply for one or you apply for multiple roles, it will not impact the competitiveness of a proposal. Um, the applicants are encouraged to apply for roles that are aligned with your interests and capacity. Um, I will say that if you do plan to apply for more than one role, you will have to submit separate applications for each role in Zoom grants. Um, and we will talk about that a little bit later. Um, you will be able to use the same basic information about your organization. You just will have to create two separate, separate applications for um, if you apply for more than one role. There is one exception to, the, um, to, to what I just said. The, FAST, the, the Family Access Support Team Coordinator, applicants for this role must also submit an application for either the FAST team or the subsidy administrator. So this, there won't be an instance where an organization only has a contract to be the FAST team coordinator. They would also need to be hosting FAST team members or be carrying out the role of the subsidy administrator. Um, to give you a sense of how um, families might experience and move through the system, um, I wanted to give a, a few sample family experiences. Um, so for family number one, they learn about the subsidy through a flyer at their childcare. They follow the link to the application. They complete the application and are approved for subsidy by the subsidy administrator. The subsidy administrator at that point connects them to a FAST team member who will be their contact for any questions or needs that they have while using the subsidy. And so you can see in that case, they came directly through the subsidy administrator first and then were, um, were referred to a, um, a FAST team member who provides them just general navigation support. For family number two, they are a current client 
at a FAST team organization, and they learn about the subsidy through that organization. That FAST team member helps them complete the application and find a child care provider that meets the needs of their family. And then that first contact person that they had um, on the FAST team will stay their support person through, um, the, through their time in the subsidy. And then for family number three, they learn about the subsidy when they learn that they are not eligible for the state subsidy because they are looking for work and are not currently employed. They apply for the Best Start subsidy and indicate that their child has complex medical needs and that they are having a hard time finding childcare that can meet their child's needs. The subsidy administrator connects them with a FAST team member who can offer case management services to use the subsidy and access childcare. So that's an example where a family applies directly with the subsidy administrator, but indicates during that time that they may have a, a, um, greater barriers to accessing. And so the, the, um, the subsidy administrator refers them to a FAST team member for case management support. Um, so here is the available funding for each of the roles um, over the next three year period. As I said, this particular RFP, we are, um, we are contracting for um, three years and there is a chance that the, that the contract will be extended um, beyond the three years um, at the discretion of PCAM. So for the FAST team, we anticipate multiple contracts coming out of this for this role. And you can see that the total funding over um, a three-year period is about $4.47 million. Um, the FAST team coordinator, we anticipate one contract for this scope of work. And the total funding for that is about $588,000. And for the subsidy administrator, um, we also anticipate one contract. And this will include the subsidy pass-through money. And so the vast majority of this $68 million is money that will flow from King County through the subsidy administrator and go directly to child care providers who are caring for eligible, um, Best Starts eligible children. Um, so as you're developing proposals and budgets for these roles, um, be sure you're proposing to carry out uh, the whole scope of work for up to the total amount of work. So if you're the FAST team coordinator and you propose to take on that role, be sure that you are, if you, um, that you are covering the full scope of work within the total amount of money. Um, for the FAST team role, this may be awarded to multiple organizations. Um, it could be anywhere from one FTE per organization or all the way up to 15 FTEs per organization. Um, but be sure that your budget is proportional to the number of FTEs you're requesting. So the 4.47 million is the total for about 15 FTEs for three years. So if you request the full amount, your proposal should include capacity to serve all of the children using the subsidy. Um, and we will ask you to prepare a three-year budget. Okay, so um, for a few tips on navigating the RFP, the proposal materials, as I mentioned before, for each role can be found in the attachment section. And so when you open up um, the application, when you open up the RFP on Zoom grants, you'll notice that there are these tabs across the top. There's a button that says show library. When you click on that, you will see um, the, the files for each of the, um, each of the following attachments. So in the, the RFP itself, so this, this file that says Best Starts Child Care Subsidy RFP, that includes program background and overview, the timeline, the application process, a glossary of terms, which is really helpful. Any, any term that you see that you don't maybe know exactly what it means, check the glossary. We've defined dozens of terms in there. And then also the King County boilerplate contract terms. Then in attachment A, B, and C, that's where you're going to find the proposal materials for each of the roles. 
These proposal materials um, include an application checklist. So make sure you have a complete application, the narrative questions, the rating criteria, the references, and any additional requested documents, which is role dependent. Um, you will also see here the budget template under attachment E and the technical assistance for applicants is attachment F. And that's that introduction to um, all of the technical assistance um, consultants who are available to support you with your application. So a, a quick note on RFP rating and review and how we select applicants. All proposals, all completed proposals submitted will go through a formal review process. Um, the review panel, which is comprised of county, King County staff, um, external subject matter experts, community members, which in our case will include parents and child care providers, members of the Children and Youth Advisory Board, um, and members or designees of the King County Council. Um, they serve as non-voting members. Um, but they will closely follow the scoring rubric that you can find in each of the roles proposal materials. Um, so please carefully review the rating criteria for each role. It's really the most critical part of, um, of the RFP. And be sure that your narrative questions address the criteria associated with that question. Um, so I wanted to give you a few tips on navigating the rating criteria. So in this far left column, we have the narrative questions. And these are, this is where you will be giving us an answer, a narrative answer um, that gives us the information that we need to assign a rating based on the criteria. And so be sure to carefully read the narrative question. I encourage you to, to look at it in the, in the proposal materials because it's a little easier and more clearly laid out than it is in Zoom grants. Um, then this center column here, the rating criteria description is for a score of five out of five points. So what you're seeing right here is if your, if your answer um, can be described perfectly by this rating criteria description, then you would get a score of five out of five for that rating criteria. Um, if you see here, this question on the left is split and has two rating criteria associated with it. And so you need to be sure to address both of these two criteria in the answer to this narrative question. You can see down here with question seven that it's just a one-to-one -one with the rating criteria. So you just need to address this, this criteria here in the answer to your question for number seven. Each of these, oops, each of these rating criteria is worth a total of, um, is, is you, you can get a score of up to five points for each of these criteria. Then in this column here, we have the weight of the question. So depending on how important that rating criteria is, it will be assigned a weight. And then the total possible score for that question is five times the weight for a total of, um, in this case, 10 points. So if you got, if you scored a four out of five on this, on this criteria, um, it would be multiplied by two and your score for that criteria would be eight points out of 10. Okay. So I am now going to go through what a completed application includes and looks like for each of the roles. And I'm going to um, go through this quickly so we have plenty of time for questions. So for the family access and support team, the completed application includes the summary questions, which is some but just questions about your organization um, and contacts, um, an acknowledgement of the county's vaccine mandate, the completed narrative questions for the family access and support team role, a completed budget template, and then a reference list that includes two to three um, parents or caregivers that the applicant has supported in the past who would be willing to talk with us about your work. Um, some important things to remember for the FAST team role. Families may come through the organization, but they may also come through the subsidy administrator. 
So organizations proposing to carry out this work should expect to serve both families that come in first through their organization and referrals from the subsidy administrator. So the purpose of the FAST team is to provide customer service for all children and families accessing the subsidy, regardless of how they come in the door. Um, you can propose between one to 15 FTEs for the scope of work. So really it is about your interests and capacity as an organization, about how many of these FAST team members you wanna host at your organization. Um, be sure to describe the level of support that each of these FTEs will um, provide, whether it's that general navigation support for about 300 children a year, or if it's the um, case management support for about 100 children a year. And then how many children serve per FTE. And then we, um, because this work is very, um, is, is very similar to and aligned with the, um, the Help Me Grow strategy that is also, um, that is also funded and, um, and led by, um, at, at King County, um, we will be awarding um, five bonus points to applicants who currently hold Help Me Grow contracts with King County. So please indicate be sure to indicate whether you receive a Help Me Grow contract from King County in your application. So for the Family Access and Support Team Coordinator role, a complete application includes, again, the summary questions and the acknowledgement of vaccine mandate, the completed narrative questions. And note here that there are several of the questions May, um, you may opt to upload as files rather than a, um, a question, a narrative answer within Zoom grants. And so just know that um, there are several questions that will give you the option to upload um, files instead of the, um, the narrative question in the, in the text box in Zoom grants. Completed budget template, um, a note about that. The templates, the budget template for the FAST team coordinator um, can be found as a part of the template for either the FAST, the FAST team or the subsidy administrator. Because the FAST, coordinate, FAST team coordinator has to be applying for one of those two roles as well, it's an addendum to the template for, um, for either the FAST team role or the um, subsidy administrator role if you're having trouble finding the template. The reference list um, should be two to three individuals from nonprofit organizations or community members with whom the applicant has partnered in the past and who would be willing to talk to, um, with us about your work. And again, a completed application for this FAST team coordinator role would include an application for either the administrator role or the FAST team role. Um, some important things to remember, um, please propose full staffing to require to carry out the scope of work, including team coordination, developing outreach materials. Um, this may not be just one FTE at your organization. So just because it's called the coordinator, that is the organization is playing the coordinator role for this team. Um, please make a proposal that includes the full scope of work, and that may certainly be more than one than one person. Um, again, indicate whether you're currently um, whether you currently receive a Help Me Grow contract because you also um, get the the five bonus points for this role, and that you must apply for a second role to um, to propose the coordinator role. Um, Okay, so for the subsidy administrator, a complete application includes the same um, sub summary questions, acknowledgement of vaccine mandate, completed narrative questions. Again, it includes several questions that you may up opt to upload as files. Um, and then this is the most significant difference for the subsidy administrator's application. You must also complete a technical the technical requirements assessment. And I'll get into a little bit more detail about on the next slide. Um, complete the budget template. And then for your references, they should include at least one from each of the following categories. A funder with whom the applicant has contracted to distribute financial assistance. 
and a community member who received services from the applicant in the past and who would be willing to talk to us about your work. Um, so for the um, technical requirements assessment document, basically what this is, is trying to get a sense of the um, the capabilities of the system that you have in place that would be running the subsidy. And so um, there is a, a header at the top that says um, this specific user. So in this case, parents, caregivers, and applicants can do the following things in your system. And um, you would, in the currently meets requirement column, say yes, no, or, you know, um, maybe, and then you would describe in the far right-hand column your capability to currently do that or your plan to develop it. And I will say, if you don't have that capability and don't believe you have a plan to develop it, that's not a deal breaker. So please just be honest about that in your, in your assessment um, and, um, and, and just, and we'll, we'll go from there. You can include screenshots um, and, and however you want to um, present this. This is attached in the library as a Word document so that you have access to, um, to edit it. Some important things to remember for the subsidy administrator role, the budget should clearly show the percentage of total funds that will be passed through as subsidy. Um, so that, you might also think of that as it will sh clearly show the percentage of the funds that you will be using to, to operate the subsidy. So what is your administrative percentage? Um, please note additional insurance requirements above sort of the standard um, insurance requirements that the county has in the contract terms. And then for the subsidy administrator, the proposal should communicate a clear plan for how you would work with the FAST team, a deep understanding of family and provider pain points in current systems, and how your approach would mitigate those challenges. And then a plan for soliciting and integrating feedback from community providers and families to improve program quality. So a quick note about evaluation um, and what will be required for these roles. Because the subsidy administrator will be hosting a central data system where the recipients of the subsidy will be applying and all of the activities of the program will be, will be um, um, recorded and, and, and documented in that central system, most of the data reporting responsibilities for this program will lie with the subsidy administrator. And there will likely be little quantitative reporting required from the FAST team. Um, but all contractors will be expected to participate in King County or third party led evaluation and continuous improvement activities, um, which might include amplifying family feedback and providing constructive feedback for the subsidy program. Um, now we're getting into some nuts and bolts tips about applying. Um, if you have um, used Zoom grants before, um, you will know it can be um, not the easiest user experience. Um, so I just want to give you some tips that we think will, will help make the process simpler. Um, again, reminder, if you're applying for more than one role, you must create an application in Zoom grants for each role. Um, we recommend, um, if I were be, to be applying for this, I would have the proposal materials open for the um, role that I was applying for because it includes the scope of work, the narrative questions, the criteria, it's all, everything you need in one place. And I would compose responses to the narrative questions in a Word document first. And then I would plan to transfer the answers when they're finalized into Zoom grants. And that way you are able to, um, to spell check, you're able to um, uh, you know, be able to share that document with other colleagues to collaborate. Um, and, and then you don't risk losing any of your work if it weren't to save these accounts. Um, so this is an important one because we 
The first question that you answer in Zoom Grants will be, what role are you applying for? And based on your answer to that question, it's going to only show you specific questions. And because of that skip logic function, the question numbering in Zoom Grants will not correspond with the proposal materials. And so just know that those, those numbers are not gonna line up one-to-one. -one. And so that's, that just, be, just be aware of that and make sure that you're following the, the numbering of the narrative questions in the proposal materials. Um, if you have trouble with Zoom grants, you can contact their tech support. Um, but if you are really bumping up against the deadline for submitting this application, just email our RFP lead, Joanna, and, um, and there is the possibility of emailing your proposal if it's like the 11th hour and, um, and your, um, your technical troubles with Zoom grants are risking you missing the deadline. Um, just a few budget tips. Um, please be sure to read the instructions for each role. Um, there is a budget template. That's an Excel file as one of the attachments. Um, please develop your budgets for the length of the contract term, the three years. Um, budgets should include the total cost necessary to carry out the scope. So in the case of um, the FAST team, it would include perhaps the FTE that are directly carrying out the work and also the supervisory staff that would be required to, um, to supervise them in your organization. So please consider all of those costs as you're building your budget. And the templates are suggestions. So please feel free to add or delete line items um, as, is, as works for your program and how you're building your budget. Okay, so this is just a, a wrap up of um, some of the additional resources. If you have any questions that don't get answered today or that you think of once, you're, once you've left, um, you can email questions to, um, to Joanna at the email here that, and the one she put in the chat. Um, please, 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 please reach out to our technical assistance providers. Um, they are, they're free and available to support you with your application. If you are scratching your head about a term and not sure what it means, please go to the glossary of terms for a list of relevant definitions, and then use the checklist for each role to make sure that your application is complete. Okay, so we have gotten to um, the point of questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and um, at this point, um, Um, we can um, ask questions that have come during the presentation, um, or you can unmute yourself and ask questions now. Katie, so we have our first question in the chat um, from Sarah, and it says, are you looking at the administrator and uh, FAST team contracts to go to different organizations, or can one org apply for both? Um, we're really open to, um, to the best combination of applicants. Um, we could definitely see um, the subsidy administrator hosting family access and support team members, hosting the coordinator, um, but we could also see the subsidy administrator being a totally different organization from the organization or organizations that hold the majority of the FAST team members and the coordinator. So it really is just, it's, it's what an organization wants to take on and who has um, a really clear, clearly defined proposal for how they would carry out those scopes of work. Um, can I define smaller organizations? Um, you know, I think um, I, can, I can get, if I can see if the county has a specific definition for that. But I might define a smaller organization as one who has, you know, a budget of less than um, a couple million dollars a year that um, maybe has, you know, less than 10 staff members um, that is not that that um, does not maybe have um, specific um, staff dedicated to um, accounting or HR. Um, so it just um, 
yeah, organizations that are um, that are on um, that are that are not as as um, as large as some. But um, we, I will make a note to um, see if King County has a, a official definition of that. Um, so Courtney's question: Are FFN caregivers included in the subsidy? Um, in at at this point, no, they are not right now. Um, the subsidy, as it stands, will go to licensed child care providers. But we are in the process of um, of designing a um, a pilot where FFN, yeah, family friend and neighbor caregivers. So those are caregivers like an auntie or a grandmother or a neighbor who take care of a child, um, but are not licensed by the state of Washington to provide that care. Um, so we are in the process of, um, of building a pilot where we would um, be able to extend some of the subsidy funding to family, friend, and neighbor providers, um, but that is more likely to come um, in, the, in the second year of the, of the subsidies at, um, operations. Thank you, Katie. It's easier for me to take myself off mute and ask my questions. And put them yeah. in the chat. So thank you. And I am off camera because this is my opportunity to be off camera today. So <laughs> thank Fair you. Fair enough. Um, so with that, just curious, when, when we're speaking about child care providers, um, with this subsidy, is it specific? To, is it for all licensed child care providers in King County? Um, is it like, do, do providers have to be enrolled in EA? Um, what are the, like, just clarifications for the type of providers this subsidy is for? Yeah, so um, we are, we will finalize the, um, the eligibility for the child care providers before the program goes public. Um, but right now, the, um, they, the um, child care providers would need to be able to accept Working Connections child care subsidy. So licensed in good standing with the state and able to accept working connections. Because um, we don't want to set up a situation where we're funding children um, who would be eligible for the state child care subsidy, but for the fact that they're attending a child care provider who doesn't accept. Um, and so that those are kind of the, the basics that we have right now, but we will, um, we will have more specific eligibility criteria when the program is um, before the program becomes public. Thank you. I have a question. Um, is there a limit to how many months a family can be authorized for subsidies? Um, like six months to a year, or can it like be a continuous thing as long as they verify? that they still qualify for the program? Yeah, Nemo, that's a great question. Um, and again, like I said, we will have um, more um, clear and, and specific policies and procedures around funding once the program goes public. But it is our intention that a family would be able to um, access the subsidy for as long as they're eligible. Um, and um, in order to reduce the administrative burden on the provider and the family, we would explore um, authorization periods um, for, you know, a year or in, in some cases, we, we would consider maybe even doing two years of authorization. Um, the, the idea is that we want to help um, have stability for families, continue, continuity of care for them with the provider um, that, they, that they have chosen. And the rates will remain the state rates, right? Um, again, we are um, we are going to you know we'll finalize all of that, but it is our intention that they will um, that rates will um, match what the state pays. But we will, like the state is doing now, if the provider charges less than what the rate is, we will still give them the rate that is published. And they will also be able to, um, if um, the rate is less than what they provide, the provider will be able to charge the family the difference. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Katie, you'd mentioned that um, the 85% threshold was chosen um, because it's mostly par to eligibility requirements for low-income housing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, either voucher programs or um, sort of other subsidies. I'm curious if there was a data sharing agreement in place, would there there be an opportunity to um, have access to that data of who currently is eligible for some of those programs to think about pre-screening opportunities? Um, it's something we we could we could totally explore. Um, it's it's not something that currently currently exists as I understand it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, well, if there are no other questions currently, um, feel free to, um, to sign off. Um, this recording will be available on um, Zoom grants and you can reach out if you think of something, um, reach out and um, ask a question to Joanna and the, an the answer will be given publicly. And um, yeah. Enjoy uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes back in your day. Thank you.